chapter 34, a psalm of David, when he changed his demeanor before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were radiant, and their faces shall never be abashed. Their po this poor man cried, and the Lord heard, and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him, and delivers them. O oh, consider and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man that takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord want not any good thing. Come, you children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man that desires life and loves days, that he may be good therein? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut them off from the remembrance of the earth. They cried, and the Lord heard, and, they, and delivered them from all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart, and save such as are of a contrite spirit. Many are the ills of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall kill the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be held guilty. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of them that take refuge in him shall be desolate. All right, let's go back up, verse 1. Now, once again, we have a song here, and uh, it's in brackets. We can We know this was probably just added in there as a... To let us know this is of David. It's a song that David wrote. We'll come find this is when he changed. It gives us a period here. And this is when he changed his demeanor before Abimelech. Who drove him away and he departed. And, uh, and Abimelech is the uh, father of the king. Or the father of the ruler. This story here. Um, I had a little trouble trying to find it. I, I don't seem like we got the total psalm and but we we know that we don't have all the words here some of these words are, are these are just little references to stories that were passed down orally for years and years and we don't have all the records here in this book but these some of these things can be found elsewhere um, or there is a similar story uh, Ahimelech was the uh, priest and when David came to get the bread, this would be during the period where uh, Akish, David changed his demeanor before Akish, man, he feigned to be a crazy man. And uh, we could find this, I believe this is going to be in uh, Samuel 21, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 21. The, and uh, Ahimelech was the, the priest at that time, but it says Abimelech. So we're going to go with that. But anyway, he changed his demeanor. So he changed his position right before whoever Abimelech was. And the and he could have been in any one of the kings of the Philistines or any one of those. And he departed. So David went out from before him in a dip with a different attitude, we might say. And we're going to pick it up with that in mind. Uh, David has went out from before Abimelech with a different attitude. Two, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So he's going to go out with a little bit of uh, different attitude. And we're going to kind of see what this is as we go. And what it is is... Uh, He's going to let God take uh, his his vengeance. He's going to put his his trust in the Lord that the that God is is the just one who's going to have the uh, uh, the right of judgment in the in the matter. But he's going to bless the Lord. He's going to sing blessings to God. 
3. My soul shall glory in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. My soul, my uh, inwardness is going to glory in God, take refuge in God, take, and we're going to see that he's going to let God seek his judgment and God seek his wrath. And the humble, the humble will hear this because at this time David uh, wasn't nobody. We might say uh, uh, he wasn't the king yet. Four, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Magnify the Lord with me. And this is the, to, when we magnify is to exalt, to uh, clarify. If we pass a magnify glass over something, it makes it bigger. It makes it clearer. Uh, and because we'll, that's what we're going to do, clarify the Lord. Clarify the Lord uh, with humility, with humility. And this is what clarifies the Lord because we're going to see that God's going to seek vengeance for us. God, uh, We take our refuge in God's law, God's understanding. We know what's right and what's wrong. So does God. God knows what's going on. He sees what they're doing. And this is where God comes in. And, and this is to exalt God, to magnify God. Five. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord. I uh, to seek God out, to look for God. And he answered me and delivered me from my fears, delivered me from these things that I, I was afraid of, the oppression, the degradation, these things that had uh, uh, death even. Six, they looked unto him and were radiant, and their faces shall never be abashed. And these that look unto him, look unto God, take refuge in the God, and, and look for God to take their vengeance, look for God to take their uh, anger, to take over their anger. They look to God, and they're radiant. This, this radiant, like beams of light going out. King James Version says they were lightened. Uh, the word is nahar. Uh, it means to shine, beam, light burn so they, to we could see the happiness in their face so to speak and their faces shall never be abashed this word abashed is simply to be made ashamed to show a shame to show shame uh to be embarrassed so we might say they they this this that we see radiating in their face is not embarrassment seven this poor man cried and the lord heard saved him out of his troubles this poor man cried and th this is a, a statement a, a lot of people can use i i use it myself because this is what happened i this poor man cried and the lord heard me the lord heard me in my humbleness and he saved me even out of all my troubles basically just do my job and the lord takes care of the rest Nine, O oh, consider and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man that takes refuge in him. Look and see how good the Lord is. And it's God's understanding. What, what is the wickedness in God's knowledge, in God's wisdom, in God's understanding? All the wickedness and the, the evilness is in the hearts of men. We'll find out it's these that seek to do the wickedness. But God's got a plan for them. Eight. The angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them and delivers them. And the angel of the Lord, this angel of the Lord, let's look at this word angel because, it, you know, a lot of people get a little misconception of what an angel is. This uh, word is mal ak, and it means messenger or representative. It, it It's from a unused root it means dispatched as a deputy according to the strongs here and that's simple it, it is the uh, the presence of the lord basically we could look at it like that it's god's presence that does this it's encamped about the righteous it's encamped around them that fear god and respect god who have a little understanding of the law and it's what delivers them. It's the, it's the, it don't have to be God, see. It's just the fact of right and wrong. 
wrong in the end is always in great fear of that which is correct be wild they already know they're wrong this is the the wickedness this is the evilness those that, that know they're in error and continue for gain 10 oh fear the Lord you his holy ones for there is no want to them that fear him fear the Lord uh, to respect the Lord. This word fear is going to come up many times. I kind of, I think we get the wrong insinuation in today's time of what this fear means. It means to have some respect, to have little honor for God, uh, to look to Him as one who we might look to as a, a, a an elder uh, with this type of respect and insinuation. They are a lot wiser than us. You, his holy ones, and this, these holy ones, these are the ones that are set aside. These are sanctified ones. These are ones who have chosen to listen, chosen to respect, chosen to fear, chosen to hear, chosen to follow. However you want to say it, it's all one understanding. They hear, heard the law. It's in their heart already. They, they look to do good. There's a difference in people. Well, we'll find down in the beginning, God made a separation in the flesh. And, and he gave us the law to prove that. 11. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they seek the Lord, want not any good thing. But they that seek the Lord want not any good thing. The young lions do lack. These young lions, anytime we see the young lions, we know it's to those unskilled hunters. They're not skilled at hunting. They're, they're in lack. We'll find out they still have to have help. They de have dependency upon the parent. And they they suffer in hunger. They, they have to suffer in this hunger because of their abilities. But they that seek the Lord, they don't want not any good thing. They don't have any want because they don't have to hunt. God provides. Twelve, come you children, hearken unto me. And I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Come, you children, listen unto me. I will teach you the fear of God. I will teach you to reverence God. and that, That's to have your own understanding in God and have respect for God in the understanding he give you. See, that's because he gives you the law. He gives you the, the Torah as your wisdom, as your knowledge, as your understanding. And you can hold to it, because nobody can take that away. 13. Who is the man that desires life and loves days, that he may seek good therein? Who is this one? Who is, and this word man, it's not necessarily a man, as in the, the masculine understanding, but anybody. Who is the person? Who is the person that desires life? Who's the one that wants to live and loves days, who loves, has, finds happiness, finds pleasure in the day, in the understanding even, of life, that he may see good therein? Who is this that loves this? We're going to see a little instruction. Here's a little instruction, 14. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Well, keep your tongue from uh, evil and your lips from speaking guile. And, and guile is accusation. Guile is like an accusation against others or non-truth. We'll go uh, look up this word guile because that's exactly what the King, King James Version says, guile. The word is mirma. Mirma. And it's deceit, treachery. The sense of deceiving. This, this, uh, we get the sense of deceiving, and we'll find out. Uh, keep your mouth from lying. Shut up your lying lips. Be quiet. If that's all you've got to say, just be quiet. It's better to listen than to speak lies, to speak non-truths. We'll find out this is a, a wickedness. This is a wickedness. To actually, just because, well, they told me. Yeah, but, I mean, what do you know? Have you looked it up? Have you checked it out? 15. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Depart from evil if you see it. 
flee, get out of there, and do good. Choose what's right. Your heart speaks to you. You know what it is. God teaches you what's right and wrong within yourself. Examine things. Listen to your heart. Listen to God speak to you. Seek peace, and that's the peace of God. Pursue it, and pursue after it. Go after it. Look for it. It's the first thing you'll need to have. It's like a foundation you can stand on. 16, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Because the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous. His eyes, he's looking over here at these that are doing good. He's not going to take a lot of time with these that are doing evil because they have turned from here. They have left this place of righteousness. They have left the place of justice and went in error. See, left in error. That's through transgression of sin. His ears are open over here unto the righteous. He's busy answering their prayers. But if you cry out to God, see, cry out to God, he's good to save. 17, the face of the Lord is against them to do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. These things that God makes plain in the earth, these they are against the evil, they are against the wicked, to cut them off so that you don't even remember them any longer. So that they're gone from understanding, they're gone from mind, they're gone from remembrance. And that's all those that, that, that teach wickedness, that do evil. They have a way of sneaking into society and, and, and bringing some form of prosperity. They've got a little cookie in their back pocket or something to, to offer a little, little exchange. Wickedness, wickedness. 18, they cried and the Lord heard and delivered them out of their troubles. But they cried. And that's those that are being oppressed by those, the wicked, by the wicked. The Lord heard them and delivered them out of their troubles. Uh, we'll find out. God got a plan. He's always got a plan. It, the whole thing is the plan of God. 19, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Safe such as are of a contrite spirit. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart. God, God's right there. He's always right there of those that got a broken heart. Those that are feeling like they've been left out somehow. What's broke your heart? Whatever it may be. God's right there. God's nigh because God has compassion. God has mercy. God has understanding. God has love. He saves those that are of a contrite spirit, those that are humble, that, that, that'll, that'll, that'll listen, that'll hear, that'll take God's comfort. 20. Many are the ills of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Many are the ills. The righteous have trouble. There's trouble f is for everybody. A little bit of, uh, of adversity. Makes you strong. We we have to learn to deal with adversity. These little troubles of life, and, and the getting ability to deal with these little troubles. There, you can get pleasure sometimes out of even little troubles of life. Because God has a way of delivering you. God gives you understanding. God will lead you in the way. Twenty one. He keeps all his bones, and not one of them's broken. And these are those that get in these troubles. They keep all their bones. Not one is broken. They every all the inside would inside the framework is still intact. They come out of the trouble, they no harm done. Everything's good to go. Because God has a way of working things out. Twenty two. Evil shall kill the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be held guilty. Evil shall kill the wicked. They, they basically are like something that's eating away at itself. They're a cancer within their self. They that, and they that hate the righteous. And these are those that look down upon somebody just because, well, they say, oh, well, they're too good. I would struggle to grasp that uh, what too good is. I know God is good. 
we strive to be. So there's really no such thing. If you're not striving to be good, just what are you striving for? Wickedness and evilness to hurt others because of it. Maybe somebody hurt you and you're trying to take it out on everybody else. There's always an answer. God, God's always there. He's got the answers and they're probably within your heart that you keep refusing to listen to. This is often the case we find in life. But God has a way of, of turning it all around through repentance. 23, the Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of them that take refuge in him shall be desolate. Because the Lord redeems the soul of his servants. Those that will serve. Those that will observe. Those that will observe his law. Those will give. God redeems the soul. And what's what we know he does. God said in the beginning. Soul that sins. That soul shall die. The soul that turns from his sin. That soul shall live. And God says I will forgive you. I will redeem you. I will cause you to live again. Whereas you were dead in sin, now you will live. And with understanding that you should not sin, that you should not trespass the ordinances of God. Take refuge in him, and you shall not be desolate. You shall not be destroyed utterly and suffer from the destruction. We'll find out in the end that God sits in his judgment seat and don't wait to the end to turn because life is a good thing. Life is abundant in its in everything that God gives us. We're going to move forward to Psalms 35. Turn and return. <laughs> 